Greetings everybody, this is Down Under. I'm going to show you some of the new models for the next release of the Enderverse mod. This will be version 2.29. It'll be our eighth release and should be out in early March. You can check it out at underverse.us. I'm going to allow some of these models to be given away, mainly because they're, they're based on vanilla structures. Vanilla meaning what originally came with the game. If you all remember this, this is called the Space Dome. You've seen it attached to places like Freeport 7. If you were able to get your ship up close to it and had a good video card, you could actually see that there are trees inside. They're very hard to see because they're opaque and some video cards can't see them at all. What I did is I took this 250 meter diameter structure and blew it up to 2,000 meters and converted it so that you could fly inside of it with your ship. Now you have to be careful how big you blow something up because uh, Milkshape is what we use to export things into CMP format and if you get it too big you can't see the structure in order to select the faces anymore. For instance, I'm going to blow this up to 1000% which would take it up to 2500 meters and if you'll notice the middle of the sex structure is missing now you can't select it to texture it so at 2000 meters it worked out well Now you can build bigger things in milk shape if you tr if you cheat. For instance, uh, last release of the Enderverse, I built Planet Illumnion, which is 8,000 meters across, and inside the planet, I built 24,000 meters of cave system. This is what it looks like textured. And yes, this is all one texture. Here is the actual model of the cave system. From here to here is 8,000 meters. 24,000 meters of caves you can play in. Notice that when I built it, I did use some tiled textures so I could align the textures so they'd look good. But then I changed this all to one texture when I exported it. I'll show you more about this program. This is an old Descent 3 program where I do most of my modeling. I'll show you more about that later. Okay, let me show you each of the three new domes here. The first one I call the Biodome, very much like the original. It's 2,000 meters across now. You can pretty clearly see the trees. And I made two entrances for it, deleted the bottom entrance. If you zoom in, you can see the trees are not just the flat panels like Digital Anvil had them. I took eight pieces, eight faces, on top of each other to make a star shape. Still nothing ideal, but I didn't want to change the vintage feel of the Freelancer Space Dome too much. Now, it's a little bit cramped to fly a ship in there. You really don't want much more than a fighter inside this dome. The second model is this empty arena. Notice I built some nice big openings on it. You can pretty much fly cruisers, battleships, bombers, and fighters in here. I'm going to scatter some of these around our event systems. Or you can use this as a basis for creating your own model like the next one I'm going to show you. I call this one the Spooky Mausoleum although it's not quite spooky in full daylight here. I've got some land masses around, some toxic slime on the floor. The story behind it is a rich tycoon in the Underverse decided it would be amusing to be buried in such a place that people could visit in their spaceships. It's got airlock doors, automated defenses. The tree here I actually made in uh, one of my descent levels called the Fellowship 
for the doors of Moria and then his mausoleum is down here one of the annoying features of Milkshape is as you try to zoom in closer everything gets darker and darker if anybody knows how to fix that let me know in Milkshape you can't really see too much but I've got a gargoyle on top here and two figures standing on pedestals here I'll show you those a little closer in uh, a different program now building these domes is not as easy as it looks there's a lot of uh, freelancer limitations I had to overcome the way I decided to do it is to build the glass separately then I built inner walls and floor that didn't exist in the original model then I separated the outer shell which includes the bottom and then whatever goes inside of it has to be merged into this main CMP and have its own surf file for solidity. If you'll notice here, these are the original flat panels that Digital Anvil used for trees. I'm going to open up Hard CMP, and this is the new biodome. And I'm going to hit the S key now to turn the SIR file on and off. And if you'll notice, it does not include the outer shell. It only includes the glass dome and the inner walls and floor. The problem I was having before is when you flew in the entrance, you could not fly from that lower section up into the glass section because of one of the glitches in Freelancer. Here is the grass and trees. But you notice I improved the trees a little bit. I put some domes over them so that a fighter could not go in there and get stuck between the branches, so to speak. And you'll notice there's one little face down here. I built these with false faces hidden in the floor. And this is the outer shell with the bottom and the two entrances. So I simply made this a separate CMP but then renamed it the same as that false floor CMP and mat and then merged everything together. and here is the final mausoleum with everything in it, the trees, the mausoleum, the rocks everything so each of these was built as a separate model merged into the main CMP but then every one of these objects has to have its SIR file built separately and included in the system I&I and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute as with everything in Freelancer, if you've ever modded this game, there's a lot of glitches and a lot of limitations. One of the first glitches in these domes, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to take the mat file for that space dome, stick it in my special UTF folder here, and I'm going to extract just the XML file for it. and then open that with notepad and this space girder 01 is the actual glass and if you look down under the type here you'll see they added the standard DCDT entries added the OCOT for the opacities and then the word 2 and what this did is not only allowed you to look through the glass to see things on the other side but the two let it have the glass on the inside even though there was no second face in there it's a pretty cool little flag they've got but it wasn't working um, when you go in game and, and press the nose of your ship up against the original space dome and these new ones before I did these fixes 
I could not see the inside glass through the outside glass. And I also could not see the trees with this particular video card. Now I remember in years past with different computers, different video cards, I could see the glass and the trees. So I decided to fix both of these glitches so that everybody could see everything. No sense building something that somebody gives me a screenshot and says, hey, this is broken, you didn't do it right. Well, I like to do things right. So the first thing I did is I got rid of the word two and I built a second layer of glass facing the inside. Now that still didn't work perfectly. When you looked through the outside to the inside and then outside of that to the shell, it was invisible. And if you were inside looking outside to that outer shell, it was invisible. It didn't work until I took this second layer of inside glass and moved it outside of the outside layer. Then everything worked perfectly. The first time I did it, I put kind of a gap in there. I think it was a three, um, a one unit gap or something. And if you rubbed your ship up against it, you could see that hollow spot and it looked fake. So using my old D3 editor, I was able to close that gap to 0 0.3 units. It's a pretty cool editor. I'll show you some of how to do that in a little bit. Okay, another glitch is that a second opaque texture was not always visible through the opaque glass. And they had assigned that same D, O, and 2 to the trees. So again, I did away with the 2 on the trees, went ahead and made a second texture on the opposite side of the trees, but I butted them right up against each other. They filled the same space, and I got rid of the tree opacity. There was no reason to really have it there. They, I think they look better the way they are. Um, the, another glitch I already mentioned is you could not fly between the upper dome and the lower dome until I structured it the way I did. And another glitch is that if you just take an object in space and insert it to, to where it's inside the dome, let's say you wanted a vanilla telescope to sit inside the dome. If you just did the INI &I files, stuck it in there, you wouldn't be able to see it through the glass. If you flew through the opening in, inside the dome, you could see it, but not through the glass. So anything that is on the other side of glass has to be merged with that structure and then a separate surf file has to be made for the solidity. So some of the rules that I came up with for building inside this dome in case you want to build your own cool structure is to get rid of that code for the second side faces. Um, don't make anything else inside opaque. You have to merge everything inside the dome to the main CMP and you need a separate surf file for it all with uh, fake one face um, one face thingies under the floor that's a technical term and finally the biggest glitch of all I discovered this when I was building that planet last year the planet has 122 CMP files when I got to the eighth or ninth one all sitting in the system I and I with the same coordinates and then entered the system in game freelancer would freeze up and it took me a long time to figure out what the problem was if you tear apart some of the vanilla stuff like say go into New York system and you look at one of their gates and each of their gates has an encounter with it and also a zone with it and maybe a few other things surrounding it as well. I always wondered why they didn't use the exact same coordinates for everything and this is the only only way I figured out how how to fix this problem. Everything has to be incremented once you get past the eighth object. So what I did 
is when you build the SIR file, which is going to be a separate CMP from the main one, you have to start with that object and move it a few units in some direction. Now in the planets I moved everything in the X coordinate. For these biodomes I didn't want to confuse people so I moved everything in the Y coordinate. So for instance whatever section this was, I think this is the tree here, I took the object I was using for the SIR physically moved it down nine units in the editor before I saved it and converted it to the SIR. And then here in the system INI file, I incremented it nine units to satisfy the fact that it's not sharing the same coordinates with everything else. And it lines up absolutely perfectly. It's not too bad when you only have this little dome thing with nine things in it, but it was quite a nightmare when you had 122 building that planet. By the way, too many objects sharing the same coordinates in space doesn't just lock up Freelancer. It locks up the entire computer. So don't test this because uh, it can crash your Windows installation. I found out the hard way. Okay, that finishes the orientation part about what the models are, what they look like, and I'm going to teach you how to add your own stuff. I've loaded the empty arena into the D3 editor. Let me show you a little bit about the editor first. Unlike Milkshape, you can change the size of any pane. You don't have to minimize and maximize one at a time. You can also zoom out as far as you want and zoom in as far as you want. I'm not sure what the uh, maximum zoom in on Milkshape is but here's a one unit grid and if I turn the grid off I can take that vertice and move it in tenths of a unit very tight stuff you can change the grid at will what I'm gonna do is zoom in on this floor here change to a grid one Make sure I'm on the floor, not the subfloor here. Okay, there's the floor. So I'm going to set the reference to there. Change back to a 100 so that there's not so much white showing. Zoom in on the middle. I'm in vertice mode. Now, this program doesn't have all the fancy little stuff that even Milkshape has. You can't just plop down a cube and stretch it out and plop down a sphere. Those features don't exist. But there are so many other things this program can do that Milkshape can't do. So I'm going to insert a couple of verts, four verts actually. Then I'm going to lasso those verts and with a shift insert I'll turn them into a face. If you can't think in 3D, you probably shouldn't be trying to use this program. So there's the face there. And I'm going to extrude that up 100 units into a box. And I'm going to delete that floor. Switch to face mode and delete that floor just to save space. Any, any hidden face should always be gotten rid of. Now one of the cool things you can do here is you just click a face, click a line, change your unit from 1 to say 2, and I can just start expanding U's and V's until I have something that I like. And then I can just carry that, that texture over to any other surface. If I don't like the way it's lined up, I can just slide it around until I like the way it's lined up. Pretty cool feature. So, let's assume you have spent several hours or several days, and this box represents a, a pyramid or something that you've built. A real complex structure that you want to export as one object. So we will... 
isolate it by grabbing just that and this dome is in the perfect space that you want it so you, the reason we built this inside the box instead of in space is so that it ends up in the perfect location when we're all done so what I'm going to do is go to mark invert and delete everything except our new box so this is now sitting in the perfect place in space ready to be saved so let's just save it as your cool pyramid so pyramid now as I mentioned before this is going to need the sur file moved up or down so everything doesn't share the same coordinates in space so we will copy a second version of this by simply saving this again as pyramid sur and let's say we're going to in increment this 10 units I will change our grid to 10 units grab everything and I will move it down 10 units and save it so now we have the pyramid ready to be merged with the main CMP and we have the server moved down 10 units that we will convert so let me go ahead and close all this and we will continue now you can use any program you want to blender etc even milkshape if you're sadistic to go ahead and build your pyramid I'm just showing you how to convert this one up and I have to thank uh, my teammate Fusion for making a bunch of tutorials of how to do a lot of this and he discovered how to do some of these command line things so here is our pyramid.orf outrage room file and pyramid sur we have to go through a couple of steps to get these into milkshape first is the oof editor which changes the outrage room file into an outrage object file very simple to use you simply open pyramid orf and save as oof and then again for the sur open pyramid sur and save so now we have two new files in oof format and now we'll run each one of those through lith unwrap and it will complain because if you notice we built those as four-sided faces freelancer doesn't like four-sided faces nor do most modeling programs so it's going to complain that it's not triangulated so we'll do a model open pyramid oof says it needs to be triangulated that's easy tools triangulate model okay done and then we'll do a file model save as ms3d and that one's done and ready and now we'll do the same thing with the sir file model open sir oof triangulate it and file model save as ms3d okay now we'll open each of these in milkshape and apply a texture to them as well as renaming them we'll just rename this one pyramid and assign our stone wall one texture and save it and we'll actually do the same thing to the sir 
Now some people think surf files aren't supposed to have textures, but sometimes if you don't do it, Milkshape will not react properly during the exporting. And it doesn't matter when it gets converted to object format anyway, it, it deletes that. So we'll save that too. Now the SIR file, we're going to go ahead and work on that first. So first we will export this as a wavefront object. Basically this will keep the vertices and not much else. It won't keep the texture. We'll go ahead and close that. Make sure Cam Studio hasn't crashed again. Okay, now we have our SIR object file. We need to run this through a few things. First is lith unwrap. So you do a file model open. SIR object and then go to Tools, Optimize Model, check all three boxes, and say OK. Sometimes you'll see these numbers decrease, sometimes not. I have noticed if you skip this step that uh, things work a little differently. So I, I never skip the step, even with something simple. And then do a model save as itself. You save over top of itself. Now that also split all the vertices, so we need to go back into Milkshape, import wavefront object, the same sir. Notice it's black now, and do an object select all, vertex weld together, it turns white, export as itself is constantly updating the same file. And don't save when you exit. Let me make sure it hasn't crashed again. Okay, the final step to make the SIR is to take this updated object file and run it through SmackBolzins. I hope I pronounced that right. Handy dandy object to SIR converter and very simple just browse to the file and say go file created done now we're gonna name this final thing as UV bio R so I am simply gonna start renaming that now UV bio R and there's the finished surf for it I've gone ahead and added a, another false face under the floor of the empty arena and created a mat and CMP file for it and renamed them to UV Bio R. So along with our new SIR, now we can open that up in hard CMP. There's our face under the floor and if we press S, there's our SIR for our new pyramid. So now we need to finish the other pyramid files to create, we'll call it UV Bio S, for the new version of the empty arena with the pyramid inside of it. Okay, I've tried this six times now and it crashes every single time. Trying to open up the empty arena and merge our pyramid into it. This computer is just is just not happy with Cam Studio recording software. I apologize. But what I did is I've gone ahead, done the merge, uniquely renamed the groups inside to UV Bio S, and then exported a CMP and a mat file for it. Now we need to do two more things to these before we're finished. The first, let's go ahead and do the CMP. It's easiest. We will open up FL Model Tool, open up EV Bio S, 
and you'll notice the center and the radiuses are zeros. FL Model Tool fills in that missing information. All you have to do is hit save. Save it as itself. And that's done. Okay, the mat file I am going to cut from here and copy into my UTF folder where I've got all my utilities. As I explained already, the glass needs this DC DT OC OT added to it. So I'm going to copy that from here from a place I've already extracted it. I'm going to use one of the UTF editors, doesn't matter much, and open that mat file. Go through the material library to find the space girder 01, which is our glass, and go to the type. Go up to the string, edit, and update that with the OCOT and save. That's all there is to it. Cut that back out of there and put it back into here. So now we should be able to open up in hard CMP the S and there it is. Our empty arena with our new pyramid inside won't be able to see it through the glass here, but you can see it through the openings. Ready to rock and roll. So this is how you add new objects inside the empty arena to make your own creations. And I hope I see a bunch of people doing this. Maybe even giving them away like I do. So hope you all had fun with this tutorial. We'll catch you next time.